let's do some review. All right. Now, when we review like this, sometimes you people tend to feel really good, like, wow, I know this stuff. The problem is, is once you get to the test, if you haven't done any other kind of studying, uh, it, turns, it might turn out that you don't know it as well as you think. Uh, so we often have people fail the first test, even though it's not rocket science, this stuff is pretty straightforward, it's not that difficult, um, but if you're not actually doing any studying, you might be in trouble. So please make sure to study. What, what do you mean fail, like D or an F? Mm -hmm. We have Fs on tests in here, and oftentimes it's a wake-up call, but I'd rather it not happen to you. I'd rather you just do well on the first test. We have a lot of people do well on the first test, but you know, someone usually fails this course. There's usually at least one person. What's the I might I have question examples that I can I can give you. Yeah, there's going to be some short answer questions. There's going to be some fill in the blank. I really love fill in the blank, where I basically give you the definition, you give me the word, right? And you need to spell it correctly. Okay, so that's something that trips up people. It's good to make flashcards to help you remember the terminology. Um, Another thing, you'll be, you'll be doing some writing exercises on there. I'll have, give you a set of facts. You give me the lead and the follow-up paragraph. Or I give you a set of facts obituary. You give me, you make it into the first part of an obituary. Probably not a lengthy article in this first one. Might be a series of very short exercises, maybe two, you know, maybe one. And then also you might be asked to uh, do an AP style correction on a paragraph. I might give you some sentences and you tell me what's wrong with them. It's not an AP style. All right, so let's do some review, just general review and then a bit of obituaries. Okay. All right, so there were three types of leads that are the most important types of leads. We've been over this numerous times. All right, and this is for the, like the straight news, the hard news, serious news usually. Not necessarily, there could be features. Uh, what name one of these types, Carly? Delayed identification lead. Very good. And what is that? Okay, you mentioned the person at some point in the article, but not in the first sentence. And we do that because maybe it's not a well-known person, right? So there's a lack of prominence. So we, the, more, the, the what is more interesting than the who. So we don't necessarily need the name of the person. It could just be a local man or a... Um, you know, a Rigby family, a um, farmer in um, Jackson Hole, something like this. Right. By the way, I might give you some leads on the test and you tell me what kind it is. Some example leads. That would be a good exercise. Just try to get you thinking. I like to do that sort of exercise. Okay. What about another type of lead? Another type of lead. Darian? Immediate identification lead, yes, the immediate identification lead. And why, why do we have this type of lead? Why would you? Prominent people, okay. So you have the president and you, you have an article about him and so you do mention him. Okay, summary, yes. So, so a nut graph is like a summary. If you have a punchy lead or, you know, unconventional lead, you have to follow up with a nut graph, right? But if you have the, if you give the information, uh, the main points of the information right there, the key facts, then that will be a summary lead. And typically, this is kind of a roundup lead in that, like if it's, a, if it's a speech, like the State of the Union address, right, you give the main points. All right. Okay, so nut graph is another good term that Connor just mentioned. You want to remember what that is. That's one that students often miss. That. Okay. Differences between a lead and a headline. That's another thing you'll want to know. But the headline is often in what verb tense? Do you remember that, Michael? The headline, which is like the title. It's often in what verb tense? Present. Yes. Okay. So sometimes I've been complaining when we do little exercises. I've been pointing out, well, that sounds more like a headline because of the verb you're using. So say, um, um, Smith excels at archery. Okay. So that's in present tense, right? And we wouldn't do that. And also there's some, some words missing there. Like if that were a true lead sentence, you, know, you would put, um, you know, John Smith is is a uh, expert archer or you would you make it more of a full sentence whereas a headline is almost like an abbreviated form it misses articles it misses you know prepositions words the words like the that, so it, uh, smith excels at archery would be one whereas it um, you might make that in present tense but you would be you know more specific it'd be a longer sentence if it were the lead right. usually now there's always exceptions to this 
Um, you know, but, but oftentimes, especially in the feature, the headline is in present verb tense. That's one big th one. Or is the lead and then both tend to have verbs, though. The sometimes headlines don't have verbs, but we like verbs in headlines, uh, typically. Now, how about, what do we think of editorializing? The word editorializing. Big shaking of the head I see there. Chris, what do you think? No. No. No good. No good. Why not? Uh, it's adding your opinion, your own opinion. Okay, it's adding your opinion into the article. As a reporter, we don't want to do that. And, and there's a few different ways this happens. Sometimes you've kind of got your gushy. Like, oh, this person is so wonderful. She's so good with kids. And look at how she's excelling at her studies. And she's going to zoom into the future. Okay, that sometimes you hear a little bit of language like that in these types of little features you did in classmates. It's, you might be able to get away with some of that, but it's not very objective. Okay, as reporters, we strive for objectivity. Other ways we see individual words, only two people died in the accident. Um, so a really good example when I graded the online papers. Even, she's even doing this. You know, even this is possible. Well, the word even, has a, there's a little bit of opinion there. Okay. okay, attribution. What is attribution? What are we talking about specifically about attribution? Devin, do you remember what attribution is? I quote. Okay, yes. I Who said the quote, right? Now, you know, make sure you understand the actual, what the actual word means, and that is what it means. And we like it in a certain order. Uh, <coughs> man, I've been writing that a lot in people's papers <laughs> for the online class. We like we like the attribution to come at the end in a certain order. So you have quote, comma, inside the quotation marks, right? The person's name, then the word stated, declared, said. Okay, we like the word said, period. Okay, so it's very important to remember. We, we overuse the word said in journalism, sorry, we just do. And we like this, we like to have a certain order. Attribution usually comes at the end in the sentence. Now, there are exceptions, but that should be kind of your go-to um, default setting in your mind for where to put the attribution. That's good. Okay, so uh, one thing that I probably just passed over, but when we think of the newspaper, what is the building block of the newspaper? What we've been doing is the articles, right? When we think of the, the newscast, what's the building block of the newscast, the TV newscast? It's kind of, kind of on the level of articles. It's the news package, right? So when they do a little self-contained package where they go on the scene, they've interviewed people, they edit it together in a little segment, that's called a news package. We're going to talk a lot more about that later, but understand that these are the building blocks. This one for a TV news, I mean not TV, a newspaper. And this one for a TV newscast. They make, they make up the newscast as much as possible with news packages. Okay, so the, the building blocks of the news, news report or news, news show, the TV news, you, is bit made up of all these news packages. Now, if they have a lot of readers and they read directly into the camera, uh, that's, you know, you see those too, but those aren't news packages. Those are, they don't have a little edited, pre-edited segments. Okay, so there are other things that they do as well, as obviously as articles in the newspaper, they do other things too. Okay, so the difference is between um, breaking news or serious news and then fluff. What do we call those two categories? Uh, all these kind of describe the same things, the first three things, breaking, spot, serious news, and that is, Melissa? Hard news. Hard news, right? So we've been kind of focusing on hard news, at least in the classroom. Your classmate thing, though, that was more fluff. Another way to say that is soft news, right? So remember the difference between hard, because I don't need this for a second, versus soft news. Hard news versus soft. Make sure you understand those two terms. Okay, so sometimes we accidentally, we put the, the, the main news, maybe it's because we just don't have very good uh, sense of what belongs first in the article, but we put it too late in the article. What's another way of saying that? What's another way of saying that, Devin? Burying the lead. You don't want to bury the lead. And there's a really good example of this, an actual article in the reading. Do you remember this? About the PTA ladies. One put out a gun from her hand, handbag and she shot another one dead. And they put that in the middle of the article, which is crazy. That was the lead. They put it too late. 
All right. And then I might ask you to draw the inverted pyramid. And you know, we've been over this repeatedly. But with the inverted pyramid, there's really two groups. This is four. All right, let's see if you remember this. Two groups. This is four. Two groups of people or individuals. Alex, can you think of one? So remember what it is. What is the inverted pyramid? Yes. Most important information first. Okay, and why do we do this? Readers and editors. Okay, please memorize this. We've been over this repeatedly. You know, if you're, if you're kind of struggling with these questions right now, it just shows you this is, this is a good indicator you really need to start studying now. Okay, please don't wait till the day before the test. So there's two groups. Readers, because short attention spans, they need to know why they should read this article, right? I told you the Bengal, the student newspaper has a real hard time with this. The leads aren't very good, so no one reads the paper. I hope that I won't, I'll edit that out of this video. <laughs> Um, you know, you have to write strong leads to make me want to read. What is this really about? Tell me something I don't know. You know, a lot of times the leads, they're, they're kind of junked up with things that are stating the obvious. They aren't the newest news. You know, tell me something I don't know, right? So it's a very reader-centric style. The other group is the editors because they can do what? They can cut from the bottom. Right? They can cut from the bottom if they need to fit it into a space. Now, is this a very writer-centric Formats? Is it very reporter center? No. Reporters often do not like the inverted pyramid because they can't show off, they can't, they can't make a story, they can't build suspense, and they get sick of the format. So it's very reader centric, it's very editor centric. Okay, it's not chronological it's not usually. Right. Okay, not chronological, not what happened first, what happened second. Though you do have another format that's related to that, right, Michael? What's related to this, but it's a different format? Uh, the related to the inverted pyramid? Yes. Kind of talked about this with obituaries. The time, timeline of events. <laughs> yes. Okay, so we start out with the key facts. Inverted pyramid. We go into a chronology. And then we end with the? End with the kicker. The kicker, which could be a quote, could be an anecdote. It rewards the person for reading to the end. Right. So obituaries commonly um, are written in this style. Right? Okay, now, there was a third new style that we really haven't done much with, but I might ask you about that. Does anyone remember the third new style? Valentine, it looks like you remember. Kebab, yes. And this is kind of cool. The idea here is that you are using anecdotes. And if you think of a kebab as having, you know, things a stick with different meat on it and, and vegetables and... The idea is you're starting with an anecdote and you're ending with an anecdote. So you're working your way around back to that anecdote. All right, then you have meat in between. Okay. And so I will say that this style is common to TV news. This is basically what they use in their TV news packages. We're not going to talk much about this, but you may see kebab come up on the test just as identification. And so you want to memorize the nine news values. Remember, for our purposes, there are nine. Let me see. If, I'm going to just throw out some examples of news. And let's see if you can identify the most important um, news value to that. Okay. The president and his family go to Hawaii for Christmas, for their vac Christmas vacation. What would that be, Michael? Prominence. Prominence, yes. Okay, so when we go to Hawaii, does that make news? Probably not, right? So that would be an example of prominence. Okay. Sorry, guys. You're going to have to stay here overnight because there's a, there's a really bad snowstorm out there, and it's too dangerous for you to leave the premises. <laughs> okay, maybe it may be impact because it impacts you, you specifically. But let's just say it's a small group of people. We're the only ones in the building. We're going to get to know each other very well. We're going to have to scavenge for food, maybe break into some of these vending machines. Uh, I'm sorry, you have to look the other way, officer. Oh, uh. <laughs> okay, maybe novelty. Maybe novelty. Raging snowstorm outside. Probably proximity. Maybe, okay, if it comes to blows. Okay, so now I'm giving you, I've given you too creative of one. But I, I was thinking proximity because the snowstorm's right here and maybe timeliness.